What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the Prime Weld TIG 225 welding machine. I'm going to show you all the controls, I'm going to show you how to set it up, and then I am going to jump into some welding. Now, let's go. Alright, so here's your disclaimer. I am a first time TIG welder. I've done some MIG welding in the past, but that's relatively simple point and shoot kind of stuff. Um, it definitely has its complexities, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to difficulty in welding, TIG welding takes the cake. So, we are going to get this thing unboxed, I'm going to show you all of the stuff that it comes with, and then I'm going to do some welding, my, basically my first TIG welds off camera because I know that it's not going to be good. Nobody starts TIG welding and on the first day, their welds are looking amazing. So. I'm going to be doing just some spot welds, just kind of running some beads, trying to maintain a weld pool, things like that, but I'm going to stop running my mouth. Let's get into the unboxing and the setup. One of the things you'll notice is that the box is fortified on all four corners with these stops. Now this is, this is the type of packaging that a lot of major manufacturers with their cheaper welders won't actually do. So that's really nice to see just in general in terms of caring for your package as it gets to the customers. So that's really nice to see. But first, let's take a look at these boxes that we've got here. Open up the first one and we see a CK Worldwide TIG torch. Now, if you guys don't know, CK Worldwide is one of the best welding torch manufacturers out there. Um, you know, debatable in terms of like top brand, but what we've got here is a number 17 flex head TIG torch. So it's gas cooled, it's not water cooled or anything, but this will cover just about anything your beginner welder is going to be doing. A nice dense 35 connector there, and obviously with your gas supply. All right, the next thing we have in the box is actually the power adapter. Now this machine is capable of running both 220 and 110 volt uh, circuits. So if you have a household circuit and you don't actually have set up to run at like 240 volts, um, this will allow you to run at a standard like 110 or 120 volt circuit. Uh, you just won't be able to get up to those kind of max amperages. Next up, we actually have a trigger that you can attach to the torch if you're doing trigger control. But because of the fact that this machine comes with a pedal, we will just be using the pedal for this one. And it's nice that they actually include a set of standard consumables. I believe it's a five, six, and a seven ceramic cups uh, with a collet, a collet body, and oh, actually it's, uh, it's two, two collets, one collet body, and a couple of different back caps. So that's nice. They actually also include one gray tungsten. So, you know, whether you decide to use them or not, it's nice just in general that they decided to include these consumables. All right, taking a look at the second box here. This is actually our argon gas regulator. So this is what you'll use to attach onto your bottle of argon gas to control how much flow you get out of your bottle. So definitely nice to have that included. They actually include a threaded adapter as well. Let's see, we've got a, uh, a handheld face shield if uh, if you need one of those actually on the table over here i have a uh, an auto darkening helmet from miller so i'm just going to be using that more than likely i won't be using this a whole lot next we have our stinger um, pretty much every tig machine is also a stick welder so this is what you use to connect your stick electrodes into if you're going to be doing stick welding which i'm not going to be doing a lot of but again nice to have Next up, we have our earth or our ground lead. And this one is actually a copper braided insert, as you guys can see there. Um, this is a, a lot of times, this is where you see manufacturers kind of skip out on the, uh, the quality of the things that they stick in the box. Uh, then finally in here, well, not quite finally, we also have our gas supply line. So out of the gas regulator that we looked at earlier, this will feed from your gas bottle to your TIG welding machine. And then finally we have the foot pedal. Now this is gonna be your main source of control over your TIG machine. This is gonna be how you determine 
how much amperage you are feeding to your workpiece. This is the metaphorical gas pedal for your TIG welding machine. Now let's get into the bit that we're really all here to see. As we take off this top section, you'll see that this is a full, complete clamshell. Uh, sometimes manufacturers will put this just on the bottom or just on the top for appearance's sake, but this is actually a full, you know, you have the top half and you actually have a complete bottom half as well. So this machine is not gonna take any damage whatsoever in shipping because of the way that they have boxed this machine. And here we have the TIG 225 ACDC welder. All right, so this is the machine. This is the bread and butter, the meat and the potatoes of the whole operation. This is really what we're here for. So the way this operates, there's a lot of dials, as you can see. So it may be a little bit overwhelming. It may be a little bit confusing, but I promise it's not. It's actually really quite simple when you understand the functions of this machine. So highlighted in red here, for a reason, is your welding current. This is the main knob that you're going to be using to control how much amperage or how much power this machine will put out. Now, if you are using an upslope or a starting current for this machine, meaning that when you step on the pedal, if you don't want full amperage right away, you can set a start current and then a slope for how much amperage you want as soon as you initiate the arc with the foot pedal and then how quickly you want that to slope up to your base welding current. From there, you can do the exact opposite. You have downslope and you have end current. So if you wanna have it taper off on its own without you actually using the pedal to taper off, you can use these. A lot of times, these are used for if you're using the trigger so instead of just immediately getting full amperage, you can actually set the upslope and the downslope. So when you click the trigger on the torch, it'll start at your base current, slope up to your max, stay at the max the whole time that you're holding the trigger. And then when you let off, it will start to slope down and then eventually it will end at whatever current you have set here for your end current. Now, these two settings we have here are for the AC side of welding with this machine. Now, you have AC frequency and you also have AC balance. What these are here to do are to control how much positive and how much negative you are supplying in your alternating current. So AC being alternating current alternates or switches back and forth between positive feed and negative feed or DCEP and DCEN, which means direct current electronegative and direct current electropositive. Alternating current switches back and forth between those two, electropositive and electronegative, constantly. And it does that at a frequency at which you set. Typically, under normal beginner level circumstances, you're gonna want this just about pretty much straight up and down. That's gonna give you 120 hertz or 120 flips or alternations per second. 100 to 120 is typically about where you want to have your frequency for welding coupons and just regular kind of scrap metal when you're trying to get going or getting started, especially when you're first learning. Now, AC balance. There's a lot of information on AC balance, but essentially what it means is how much electropositive versus how much electronegative. If you have this straight up and down at 50, what it's going to give you is 50% electropositive and 50% electronegative. So typically when we're welding aluminum, we want the AC balance to be about 30% positive, which is also known as the cleaning action, versus the electronegative, which is the welding action. And so what you want, this references the positive side. So you want this balance to be somewhere in about 25 to 30% because that's about as much as you want when you're typically welding aluminum on AC. So to recap, 120 hertz straight up and down is about where you want it. Really 25 to 40% uh, AC balance is about where you want that to be. All right, so now let's talk about this bottom row of dials here. On the left side, we have pre-flow and all the way on the right side, we have post-flow. So what these two control is how much argon gas you're supplying before the arc strikes and the post flow is how much gas it leaves flowing after your arc terminates. So the pre flow goes from anywhere from zero all the way up to three seconds. And typically, 
one second or so of pre-flow is about all you need. On the post-flow side of things, you can go all the way up to 10 seconds if you really want. If you're welding something super uh, reactive like titanium or something along those lines, you can go to 10 seconds. Or typically you'll be running, uh, if you're running stainless or if you're running um, aluminum or anything like that, five seconds is a pretty good starting point. If you really need to, you can bump it up to have more flow after that but five seconds is a pretty good sort of medium ground starting point. So these three dials in the middle control your pulse settings. Now, what pulse does is that it actively changes what your amperage is. So if you want your top welding current to be say 100 amps, you could set that to about 100 amps. Uh, and if you want your base current to be about 50% of that, you would set that right in the middle at 50%, which means that if your welding current is 100, then your base will be 50 amps. Now this pulse frequency or pulses per second will determine exactly that. How many times does it alternate between high and low per second? And so you have two different settings. This machine is actually somewhat unique in this price range in that it runs both low pulse and high pulse. So when this is set to low pulse, you can have either half of a pulse per second or you can have up to 10 pulses per second. Now, if you switch this to high pulse, you can go from 10 pulses per second or all the way up to 200 pulses per second. Now, the reason you would want to run pulse on a TIG welding machine is that a lot of times it can help keep your weld a little bit cooler. So you're not constantly feeding it 100 amps, heating up the part. You're only feeding it 100 amps when you actually want to be welding metal. So you can run say three pulses per second and only be feeding 100 amps a third of the time. Now what the rest of these switches do is this allows you to choose whether you want to TIG or if you're gonna be using the stick. For our case, pretty much we're gonna be using TIG all the time. Here is your switch between AC and DC. So if you're welding things like steel, stainless steel, uh, chromoly, titanium, you can just stick with DC and you're good to go. You won't have to worry about any of these AC settings. If you're welding aluminum, you will absolutely want AC. Um, the 2T or 4T operation is here to determine whether you're going to be using the foot pedal, which is 2T, or if you're going to be doing something like scratch TIG, scratch TIG or lift TIG, and that would be your 4T operation. I'm pretty much always going to be using the pedal, so I'm gonna be leaving that in 2T. So that covers pretty much everything with the dials and the switches and how you actually run this machine. Now, let's talk about your setup. All right, so let's start on the back of the machine. We've got the power supply, which is either your 110 or your 220 volt circuit. You've got your on off switch, and then you have your argon gas supply into the machine, which it will then feed out the front through your torch and onto your work. So because of the fact that I only have a 110 volt circuit in my garage, I'm not going to use this 220. So I'm going to use the adapter that they've included. Simply plug these together and then plug this into your standard wall outlet. All right, so now let's talk about your argon gas connection. They've included a cable nice crimped cable here. So these actually don't need any additional thread sealant. These are designed so that they essentially seal or close around the opening that they plug into. So you don't need to have any thread sealant around this when you go to plug it in. You don't wanna make this too tight, but I am going to just snug it down a bit with an adjustable wrench. Now let's talk about our argon. So this is the pressure regulator that's included with the kit. So again, these fittings are machined so that they seal properly. So you don't need any kind of extra, you know, pipe fitter sealant or anything like that. This just goes straight in and obviously make sure your gas is closed here. This just goes straight in and you thread her up. So now this is tight, but again, I want to make sure you don't have any leaks. So I'm just going to snug that a little bit with an adjustable wrench. So now in order to connect our gas line to the machine, to our regulator here, they have included this adapter which will thread onto our regulator here. And then we'll take our supply line to the machine, plug it right into the bottom and get that threaded on. Again, just a little bit snugged. And so finally, we're going to set up the front of the machine. So again, we've got our power lead going off this way. We've got our gas line going up to our bottle of argon. So first let's connect our ground. 
All right, so once again, we are working in the DCEN orientation, which means that your electrode goes in the negative terminal. The ground or your, your earth lead will go in the positive terminal. So we would just line it up here, make sure that's connected nice and tight. And again, that's a dense 35 connector, so that's super nice. And it again, comes with this nice copper braided ground earth lead. So super, super nice parts that this kit come with, especially for the price that you pay. Now, one comment that I do have on this is that because of the fact that this is your ground, this will either be connected directly to your piece of work. So if you're doing a big piece of sheet metal, you can just connect this directly to your piece of metal that you're welding onto. Or if you're like me and you have a welding table, a metal welding table, you can connect your ground directly to the table and then have your whatever work you are doing, whatever piece it is, on top of the table. And that will allow the current to flow directly from your work through the table into the ground lead and back into the machine. So now let's connect our control. This kit comes with a really, really nice control pedal. It, the earlier versions of this, the, when they first got released, used to come with a not so great pedal, but they listened to their customers and now they are delivering this really, really nice control pedal. So this is going to go directly into your control terminal. If you were using the uh, trigger switch for your TIG, that would go in here as well. But again, because we want a lot more control, we're going to be using that foot pedal. And it threads in nicely. So last but not least, we are going to connect our electrode or our torch. So as you can see, our torch actually has two different lines coming into it. And that's because at some point, you've got to feed the argon gas through this line to your torch so that it comes out and actually helps you protect your weld as you're working on it. So we're just going to attach this, throw it in there. Nice snug, but not super tight or anything. Not crazy, right? So then we're going to take our gas line, make sure that's connected right in there, get that threaded in, and then we'll just get that snug down. And there you have it. Now your whole machine is set up and it's ready to weld. So that is gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. That is everything about the Primeweld TIG 225X TIG and stick welding machine. The only thing you really need to do at this point is get your torch set up with whatever consumables you like, whatever tungsten you prefer, and get ripping. Now, being a first time welder, I have gotten some coupons and some filler materials from Weld Metals Online. I'll include a link down below if you guys can check that out. Messing up a bunch of stuff because nobody starts TIG welding on their first day and is good at it. I'm expecting to be bad. That's one of the reasons why I'm not filming. It's because I'm sure I'm gonna screw it up. I'm gonna dip the tungsten, I'm gonna Q-tip it, a whole bunch. But this is just practice for what's to come in the future. If you guys wanna see some of the welds that I inevitably screw up, and if you also wanna follow my K-Swap Subaru BRZ build that I'm gonna be doing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you found this video helpful, leave it a like down below, and we'll see you guys on the next one.